the 2024 election is merely one week forthcoming. Today we will examine the revised 2024 electoral map informed by current polling averages. Numerous final polls have already been published. CNN, The Wall Street Journal, and The New York Times have published their final polls. Consequently, minimal alterations are anticipated following this. We will acquire new data. However, this will be the penultimate occasion on which I undertake this for the 2024 race. Consequently, with all the secure states populated, there is a paucity of data from them. No significant changes are occurring. We will concentrate solely on the races that exhibit any degree of competitiveness. A group of approximately 20 states will determine the next president. We will commence in Nevada. Nevada has not voted Republican since 2004. Current indicators suggest that Trump is poised to overturn the results in Nevada, a state he narrowly lost by two points in the previous two elections. Trump maintains an average lead of 0.7% and is ahead in approximately half of the recent polls. Nevada is indeed competitive. I would assert that it is the most competitive state in the nation, second only to Michigan. In examining the state's polling over the past few months, Harris maintained a lead throughout September. However, as October commenced, her figures began to significantly decline. Consequently, Trump is currently in a favorable position. He is likely to secure victory in Nevada. Our map will exhibit a Republican tilt. Subsequently, in Arizona, we encounter another state that Trump did not secure in the previous election. He lost Arizona to Joe Biden by 3.10 percentage points. Previously, Trump won the state by nearly 4 percentage points against Hillary Clinton. Similar to Nevada, polls indicate a potential reversal in support for Trump. The former president maintains a 1.5% lead in nearly all polls published during October. Kamala Harris has limited prospects in this situation. In contrast to Nevada, Kamala Harris was never significantly ahead in Arizona. There was essentially a one- to two-day interval during which she was the leader at the Democratic Convention. That was when her support reached its zenith. Since then, Trump's lead has consistently increased. He has managed to maintain this one- or two-point advantage. Given that polls frequently underestimate him, Donald Trump is poised to secure victory in Arizona. The map for Colorado and New Mexico will predominantly reflect a lean Republican stance as we possess limited data. Currently, there is no polling average available for Colorado. However, Harris maintains an 11% lead. This poll is sponsored by Democrats. Therefore, one must approach these figures with considerable skepticism. It is evident that Harris will not secure a double-digit victory in Colorado. She will be fortunate if the state favors her by seven points or greater. Based solely on the available data, the race is likely to favor the Democratic Party. In New Mexico, the vice president leads by 7.7 .7 points. The most recent Albuquerque Journal poll indicates she is ahead by nine points. It is highly improbable that she will surpass Joe Biden, who won New Mexico by 11 points. This race will feature single-digit competitors. It is likely that it will be awarded to Harris by a margin of less than seven, possibly even less than five. Current data suggests that the election is likely to favor the Democratic Party in New Mexico and the Republican Party in Texas. This will provide Trump with a significant advantage. He is undoubtedly poised to secure victory in the Lone Star State. It was anticipated to be competitive. In 2020, it was anticipated that Biden would narrowly approach victory in the state, potentially winning by one to two points. That was perpetually unfeasible. Texas is unlikely to transition to a Democratic majority for another two to three decades. At a minimum, numerous individuals must be swayed by Democrats to secure victory in the state. Texas is a vast state with 40 electoral votes,
Donald Trump is currently the unequivocal front-runner. He possesses a 6% advantage in the polls. He consistently leads in each instance by comparable margins. The polls previously underestimated him by 5 to 6 points. This time, he is likely to secure Texas by a double-digit margin. I believe that the polls are once again overlooking many of his supporters, and the Lone Star State will significantly enhance Trump's standing, likely reflected on our map, before we proceed. Approximately 70% of you are not subscribed. Please subscribe now for additional content related to the upcoming November election and join my Discord server to engage in our 2024 prediction map contest at Discord G Elections. We will now shift our attention to the Midwest, where many candidates have concentrated their efforts in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. It is highly probable that these three states will determine the election if Harris secures victories in all of them. She is poised for electoral success. If Trump secures even a single victory, it is unequivocal that he will be elected the 47th president. Thus, these states have been frequented more than any others. Initially, we will focus on Minnesota, a state characterized by a fiercely competitive race, particularly due to Kamala Harris's subpar performance. She holds a lead of merely 4.7% in a state that Joe Biden won by 7.1%. The challenge for Harris is that she is anticipated to perform worse than Biden. Her performance is inferior to Biden's nationwide. However, Minnesota is a state where she ought to possess an advantage. She is running with the actual governor, namely Tim Walz. If she cannot secure a victory in Minnesota by a margin of seven points or greater while campaigning alongside the state's actual governor, she is in a precarious position. Minnesota will exhibit a predominantly Democratic lean on the map. If Harris continues to perform in this manner elsewhere, she is likely headed for a significant defeat. Next in Iowa, we have a state that Trump thoroughly altered. Examine the observations made in 2012. Obama secures victory in Iowa by 5.8 percent. Four years later, Trump secures a state by nearly 10 points. That constitutes a 15-point shift in favor of the GOP within a mere four years. All of this was made possible due to the former president. Currently, Trump is ahead by four points in the sole poll published here. This poll is evidently inaccurate. Trump is likely to secure the state by a margin of double digits. Currently, Iowa is projected to lean Republican. Based exclusively on the available data, we will now proceed to Wisconsin, likely the second most significant state in the nation, following Pennsylvania. The sole reason Wisconsin is not voting more conservatively than Pennsylvania, as is customary, is due to Harris selecting Walls as her running mate. As the governor of Minnesota, Tim Walls will exert influence across the border in Wisconsin. However, it appears that he is not making significant progress, as Wisconsin polling continues to favor Donald Trump. The former president has a 0.2% lead. This race is indeed competitive, as six polls conducted in the past month indicate a complete tie between the two principal party nominees. Wisconsin has favored Harris since her initial entry into the race. However, as the campaign progresses, she is diminishing in support, while Trump has gained the advantage. Wisconsin is poised to be one of the most competitive contests in the nation, mirroring its status in the previous two elections. In 2016, it supported Trump by a margin of 0.7, while in 2020, it favored Biden by a margin of 0.6. This time, it is likely to be a tilt state as well however, in support of the former president. Prior to proceeding, I wish to inform you about Polymarket, the preeminent prediction market globally, where one can monitor electoral outcomes and promptly ascertain the front-runner. These odds respond in real time to current events rather than after several days. Similar to the polls, there exists no bias or media distortion, merely unadulterated data. 
Market odds represent the aggregated analysis, convictions, and insights of numerous traders responding to global occurrences. Polymarket has recently introduced a mobile application that allows users to access their 2024 election forecast conveniently. I utilize it daily to remain informed about the presidential race. Obtain it at no cost immediately by utilizing the QR code displayed on the screen or the link provided in the description below. We will now redirect our attention to Michigan. It is unlikely to be the pivotal state. If Trump were in Michigan, he would have already secured victories in Wisconsin or Pennsylvania, and those two states would suffice for him to reach 270 electoral votes. Nevertheless, Michigan is the most progressive among all seven battleground states. If she cannot secure Michigan, she is poised to experience a significant defeat in this election. Similar to Wisconsin, Kamala Harris's campaign is experiencing a significant decline. With the election approaching, Donald Trump has secured a 0.2% advantage. Harris's figures increased marginally in recent days due to a new poll from Quinnipiac and another from Bloomberg. These are two of the most unreliable pollsters, consistently oversampling Democrats while analyzing the average fluctuations over recent months. Harris maintained a lead from the outset of her campaign, similar to Wisconsin. Similar to Wisconsin, as the election approaches, Kamala Harris's support has diminished, while Trump's has increased. Consequently, Michigan is expected to exhibit a predominantly Republican inclination. Trump presently maintains a slight lead, though the outcome remains uncertain. In Ohio, we have a race that will not be as competitive as those in the northern states. Similar to Iowa, there was a significant shift from 2012 to 2016, transitioning from Obama by three points to Trump by eight points. An 11-point shift to the right occurred when Trump initially entered the political arena, and he is performing exceptionally well in polls. At this moment, he is ahead by seven points. In 2020 and 2017, Trump was projected to win the state by a margin of only 1%. On both occasions, he secured victory by a margin of 8 points or greater. With Trump currently leading by 7 points, Ohio is likely to be secured by him with a double-digit margin. The Buckeye State is expected to align with the Republican Party, thereby concluding the Midwest with Pennsylvania. No state will be more consequential than this one. Pennsylvania is highly probable to determine the election outcome. It possesses 19 electoral votes, the highest among all swing states. According to the polls, Donald Trump has a lead of 0.6%. It is evident that this is a state he is poised to win. In 2016 and 2020, Biden and Clinton maintained substantial advantages over the former president. Today, we observe a predominance of red interspersed with occasional blue. Recent surveys and polling averages over the past few months indicate that Pennsylvania has been highly competitive. Except for the aftermath of the catastrophic presidential debate between Biden and Trump that effectively compelled him to withdraw from the race, Pennsylvania has consistently been a competitive state. Despite Biden's subpar polling in numerous states, he performed comparatively better in his birthplace. With Kamala Harris now in the race, her performance surpassed that of Biden. The race was competitive. However, as is typical in election years, Trump is gaining and extending his lead. Pennsylvania is expected to lean Republican, according to the most recent polls. In the Northeast, Two states are likely to favor Harris, although they will be more competitive than in the previous election. New Hampshire voted for Biden by a margin of 7.4 percent, Maine by 9.1. Currently, the vice president is ahead by 6.3 points. In New Hampshire, she is highly likely to perform poorly. In Maine, she leads by 11 points. The polling here is exceedingly unfavorable. 
The polls significantly overestimate Kamala Harris, indicating she leads by 17 points, which is double Biden's margin, despite the Democrats having made virtually no progress in Maine. In the second district, Donald Trump holds a lead of approximately one to two points. This is solely due to the unfavorable polls emerging from the University of New Hampshire. According to the data, New Hampshire is projected to lean Democratic, Maine is expected to be likely Democratic, and the 2nd District is anticipated to lean Republican. Proceeding to the southern region, we commence in Virginia, where Kamala Harris holds a 6.4% advantage. I anticipated winning the race by no more than 5 points, possibly even fewer than 2. The most recent Rasmussen poll indicates that Harris leads by 3 points. Rasmussen indeed possesses an ideology that strongly favors Republicans. In midterm elections, this typically leads to an overestimation of the GOP. However, regarding Trump in both 2020 and 2016, it has positioned them as one of the most accurate pollsters, as many other mainstream media pollsters fail to capture liberal voters. I am not asserting that it is intentional, but that has consistently occurred on every occasion. Thank you all for viewing. Ensure you like, comment, and subscribe immediately for additional content of this nature in anticipation of the November election.